What's up everyone? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike. This is my whiteboard and today we're going to be talking about something to consider when we're rolling a trade or when we're converting an options trade into a stock trade and then continuing to reduce our cost basis against that. So one thing that we can get tripped up tripped up with is our break even point and sometimes we can actually sell an option that's way below our break even and actually lock ourselves into a loss. So today we're going to walk through how someone might come upon that situation and how to avoid it by just paying attention to one simple metric and that is your break even. So let's go on to the first side and we'll talk about a few things to keep in mind when we're thinking about cost basis reduction. So really when we're looking at cost basis reduction, what we're trying to do is reduce the cost of trade entry. In other words, if I'm gonna buy 100 shares of stock at a stock price of 50, it would cost me $5,000. But alternatively, what I can do is take those shares and sell a call against it with no additional risk, and let's say I can collect $1 for selling that call. I can now get into that trade for $4,900 in terms of cost basis reduction instead of $5,000. So it's costing me less to get into that same trade. Yes, I'm capping my upside potential, but one thing we need to focus on is something that we can control. And cost basis is one of those things. So if I'm bullish on an underlying, maybe I'll get into a covered call or maybe I'll sell a naked put. But when I'm looking at cost basis, it's the one thing I can control. I never know where the market's gonna go. I don't know where implied volatility is gonna go, which which are all things that are going to affect the price of the option and the overall P&L of my trade. So if I focus on something I can control, like cost basis reduction, I'm gonna put myself in a good position for that strategy. And when we're looking to manage that strategy, regardless of whether it's a covered call or short put or an iron condor, whatever it is, what we need to focus on is to always roll or adjust the strategy for a credit. If we're adjusting strategies or rolling strategies for a debit, we're actually increasing our max loss on the trade, we're not adding to our max profit if things go correct for us, and we're ultimately entering into a lower probability trade with no benefit. If we're rolling for a credit, we're entering into that lower probability trade for a benefit. We're reducing our cost basis and we're improving our max profitability if the trade actually goes our way. So what we need to do to focus on avoiding locking in losses with these situations is to really just assess and focus on the break even point. So what we're gonna do today is walk through a strategy. We're gonna talk about selling a naked put and we're gonna let the naked put go in the money and we're gonna get assigned on those shares and we're gonna to continue to reduce our basis by selling a covered call against that or ultimately just selling an out of the money call since we would already own the shares. But we're gonna analyze a few different situations and we're gonna weigh the pros and cons of each. So let's go on to the next slide and we'll talk about the very first trade which is going to be our short put. So let's say we are looking at selling an out of the money put, which is just going to be a put that's below the stock price because it has no real worth at expiration, which is why it's considered out of the money. If it was in the money, it would be above the stock price because at expiration, it would have worth. Someone would be able to sell their shares to us at a higher price if the stock price was below the strike. But since it's above the strike as we see here, it is out of the money and all of that value is going to be time and volatility value, which is great for reducing our cost basis. So let's say I'm looking at a 95 strike put and I'm able to sell that for $2. So I'm five points out of the money or five points below the current stock price. And I've got a day sell expiration of 45 days, which is what we've shown to be optimal from a PL per day perspective and essentially a theta perspective as well. So let's say I deploy this trade and I go ahead and sell that out of the money put, which is going to have a much higher probability of success regardless of when I compare it to buying those shares outright. So if I were to buy those shares outright, of course I would have unlimited profitability to the upside, but selling this 95 put, I can actually profit if the stock price goes down to 99, 98, 97, even down to 95. As long as that put expires out of the money and worthless at expiration, I'm gonna be able to keep that $2 credit. But let's say that doesn't happen and the trade goes against us. So over the course of 25 days, the stock price has dropped from 100 to let's say right around 93 and a half. So what I need to know is, first of all, I need to consider what I want to do. So I can either consider closing the trade for a potential loss 
or I can consider rolling the trade out in time, or if I'm comfortable with owning the shares here, as opposed to buying it at 100, if I'm very comfortable with owning the shares at 95 and including my cost that I collected, which is $2 of premium for opening the trade, it's gonna bring my break even down pretty low. So let's say that at expiration, the stock continues to drop down to 90. We're at expiration day, we have to make a decision and we decide to ultimately accept the assignment of the shares. So let's say that I allowed this put to expire in the money, which would ultimately turn into 100 long shares of stock at expiration. If we remember, our short put is just the giving someone else the right to sell their shares to us because a long put contract is the right to sell shares at a certain stock price. So if I'm selling that option, I'm selling the right to someone else to sell their shares to me. So that's exactly what's gonna happen. So that's why selling a put is a bullish strategy because ultimately it will result in long shares of stock at expiration. So let's say we're letting the put go in the money and exercise through expiration. So now I would be long 100 shares at the strike price of 95, but I did collect a $2 credit, which is still going to be valid because when I sold it, it was all extrinsic value. So all of that value is going to dissipate from the option at expiration. So my loss is actually only $300 at this point. As opposed to buying the shares at 100, I actually am long the shares at 95 and I collected 200 extra dollars from the premium for that contract. So my break even actually goes from 95 down to 93. So that's what I want you to focus on on the next slide when we talk about the options that we have. So we're gonna have the orange bar here be our break even point and really we need to analyze the loss. So compare the loss of $300 because our break even's at 93 to a loss of $1,000 which is exactly what would happen if I bought the shares outright at 100 here. So as you can see, it's a huge difference. We've only got $300 of loss right here. We only need the stock price to go up to 93 for us to break even. Whereas if we were to purchase the shares outright at 100, we would have had, the, had to have the stock go all the way back up to 100 just to break even. So now that we are into the shares and we've got 100 long shares of stock, we wanna to continue to reduce our cost basis and we wanna make sure that we're not locking ourselves into a loss by placing our strike in an incorrect or unoptimal situation. So let's go on to the next slide and we'll talk about a few different scenarios that we can walk through. So now we're long the shares at 95, but our break even is at 93 as we have signified by this orange line here. So the stock price is still the same and what we're gonna do is walk through three different scenarios of selling an option, selling a call against these shares, which does not require any more risk because the brokerage knows that I'm long 100 shares of stock, so I can sell a call which is going to ultimately result in the opposite of a short put. So these, this short call here is going to result in short 100 shares of stock, which means that I don't need to put up any more capital or take on any more risk because I'm already long 100 shares of stock at 95. So if the stock price comes up above the short call, my short 100 shares, which I would be at, at this point, are going to completely offset my long 100 shares that I already own, which is why it's considered a covered call. This would be a naked call if I did not have the shares, but since I own the shares at 95, it's considered covered because I don't take on any more additional risk here. So let's say that I've got my shares at 95 and I'm looking at selling an option at a few of these strikes. So let's analyze what would happen here. If I were to sell this option at the 100 strike, I'm giving myself a ton of room to the upside for potential bullish movement in the underlying. But on the flip side, I'm only collecting about 10 cents to do so. So what would my potential profit be? Well, first of all, we'd have to consider what would happen to our break even. Our break even would move from 93 down to 92.90. So basically what would happen is if I'm collecting 10 cents, I can ultimately apply that to my break even and move it down to the downside. So my break even would move from 93 to 92.90. And all I need to do to calculate my max profit is take the difference between my break even of 92.90 and measure it against my strike here. So if I subtract 92.90 from 100, I get 7.10, and that's really what my ultimately max profit would be if the stock price ended up coming back up above this short call of 100. So yes, I do have the ability to make a nice profit on this trade, but there is probably a low chance of this happening where the stock price comes all the way back up to 100 
And at the same time, I'm only collecting about 10 cents. So if it does not happen, where if the stock price stays right around there, or maybe goes up a little bit, I'm only reducing my cost basis by 10 cents. So we have to think of the trade-off that we have here. We're either collecting a smaller amount of credit for more potential upside movement if the stock price does come up to these levels, or we can look at something that might be a lot more feasible, which is moving our strike a little bit further down, collecting more, and giving up some of that upside profitability for a better break even. So let's see what would happen here. So let's say instead of looking at the 100, I'm now looking at the 95. So at the 95, I can collect 50 cents. So my break even would go from 93 down to 92.50, and then I can just subtract my strike from 92.50. So I've got my strike of 95, subtract 92.50, and I get $2.50, which is my, ult my ultimate potential profit at that situation. So here, we're looking at a much higher probability scenario of maybe the stock price does come up around here. I'm able to collect five times more credit than I would if I sold this 100 strike, and I'm still able to collect a feasible profit or a nice profit if the stock price comes up around 95. Because we have to remember that our break even would be at 92.50. Anything above the 95 strike would ultimately be offset because the short call here is going to replicate short 100 shares of stock. And I already have long shares at the 95 strike. So what would happen is anything above this stock price nothing would really happen. The short call would see losses, but my long shares would see equal gains in intrinsic value. So basically, we would put ourselves at a, a better position in terms of reducing our basis because of that extra credit collection, and we're still gonna be able to get a nice profit. But now we need to think about maybe moving a little bit lower below our break-even point, and this is where it can get a little tricky. So some people might own the stock at 95, not realize that their break-even is actually at 93, and they might sell a call that's really close to the stock price. And this is where we can get into trouble. Because if I'm selling something that doesn't move my break-even below the short call, I'm going to be locking in a loss. So let's talk about how that happens. So instead of looking at the 95 here, we're gonna be looking at selling a 91 strike call. So if I'm able to collect $1 in credit, which is obviously better than the 50 cents here, it still does not put us in a profitable situation. So what happens is we collect that $1 and we move our break even from 93 to 92 but my short strike is at 91. So as we saw from this example, anything that happens above 91 is going to be counterfeit by our long shares. So what does that mean? Well, we're basically washed out at 91 and my break even is only at 92. So what does that result in? That would result in a locked in $100 loss. So it's really important to realize where our break even is when we're analyzing the reduction in cost basis from these sort of trades, because if we go much further down from our break even and we don't collect enough to move our break even below our strike, we're gonna put ourselves in a locked in loss position. If I were to be able to collect $5 for this call, my break even would move down drastically and I would be able to be profitable in the situation. But if I'm not able to move that break even down, that's where we can get into trouble. So it's really important to keep an eye on the break even when we're creating these sort of strategies. So let's wrap all this together with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway we've got is to be aware of that break even when we're selling strikes. Obviously the credit collection is going to move our break even, so managing the, the relationship between those two is going to be key in making sure that we don't lock in the loss. So we can go, go below our stock ownership, but we need to make sure that our credit moves our break even lower than the short strike we sell in this covered call example. And of course locking in losses isn't the worst possible situation. Losing $100 is still better than losing $1,000, but it's not the best either. So we always wanna make sure we're putting ourselves in these optimal situations. So be sure to keep track of the break even when selecting strikes with strategies such as this. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you liked this segment. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email here, or you can follow me at Mike. Stay tuned though, we've got Jim Schultz coming up next. Hi everybody. I hope you like this video. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to watch us live. And